So did you really change in the last two years? You became more focused, more scheduled, right? Yeah, I became more committed, you know. I think uh, after those two losses that I had, you know, the loss of Kamara was one that was very close to become a champion. And then the loss to Shimaev, too, was a war. And mm -hmm. uh, I just believe it could be those two guys. You just got to be a little bit more committed, I think, more real to the game, you know. So and then I did, you know, I changed a lot of things on my lifestyle, changed a lot of things on my diet, you know, and the, my preparation. Like, you start, uh, I start kind of to invest more in that in my training, on, on, on nutritionists and everybody, you know, so that's, I think that's one thing that I did the most, you know, getting more training partners, training, usually scheduling, psychologies, and uh, just get it to the next level. Yeah, and uh, the Hamzat fight is probably was a turning point for you, right? Although it it wasn't, it although you seemed like gained more from loss than Hamzat gained from being right. Yeah, that was another one that that I learned so much. You know, the guy was a, a tough guy with a crazy hype, and I knew I could do good. I knew I could beat the guy, but kind of like that fight was good that the fans realized who I am. You know, I knew already who I am. The coach knew it, but the fans didn't know. And I think a lot of eyes, just, a lot of fans just opened their eyes. Oh shit! Okay, that's the guy. You know, especially in getting a fight against a guy that was way behind in the ranks. That wasn't giving kind of too much for me. It was a lot of risky fight, yeah. and I took anyway, yeah. you know. So I think a lot of a lot of fans, a lot of I think it, a lot of fans kind of took notice on that. Yeah, and so this is your third weight cut in the last five months, right? And uh... the last three, I think three months and a half, right? January twenty first, then February, March, yeah, April, May, like in less than five months, it's gonna yeah. be my third weight cut. I think uh, because, like, those changes that I did, you know, like I said, I changed my whole life cycle, plunge every morning, eating a lot of healthier than before, no added sugar. And I just cut, like, 15 pounds. I don't cut more than that, you know. I think I weigh myself today again. I'm, I'm walking around 185, 187 pounds. Today, 185 again. Last, last week, 184 after training. So at the end of the day, I cannot damaging my body that much in a way because that's why I move up from lightweight to welterweight to don't have to cut a lot of weight mm -hmm. and then be, I've been feeling a lot better I think for the young fighters stop with that crazy weight cut that's too much that's not good for your body especially that next day we gotta go to a war next mm -hmm. day we gotta go to a war you cannot kill your kill body a day before so I do a weight cut but I don't cut a lot of weight anymore so, and uh, have you seen Bilal's last interview? He said that he weighs 210 pounds as of yesterday. Yeah, I don't I don't think he's that big, you know. He was there, he was there in, uh, here in Miami when he fought Masvidal. He didn't look that big. And then he posted a video that he was running. After a run, he was, what, 189, 187? He tweeted out his way. I think 187, I don't know. I think what it is, he started building an excuse. You know, oh, I was on Ramadan. Oh, I'm too heavy. Mm -hmm. I think he already built an excuse. I think that's the thing. Uh, so your your teammate, uh, your close friend, uh, they sent a look at Fort Bilal, right? And they had yeah. kind of a close fight, right? And Very close is, is it like the fight that you, you, was, uh, you were learning, studying? Yeah, for sure. That's uh I I don't I watch a lot of Bilal Muhammad's fight already. Mm -hmm. uh, I still I still watching, but I think he's gonna take a little bit approach like a little bit the looking fight, you know. But looking is more a striker than I am. Yeah. I'm 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 as a I'm more as a grappler for sure. He can strike, but I'm more as a grappler. I mm -hmm. think he's gonna take he's gonna try to take take the pressure a little bit. I think he's gonna do a little bit more. The way he fought Sean Brady, I think that's the way the the Bilal Muhammad will, will approach that fight. Not the way they fought the center because look, it puts a crazy pressure on you. And uh, but I think he's gonna he's gonna approach more the way he fought Sean Brady in Abu Dhabi. I think that's the way that he's gonna fight more because he just like me, we adjust a lot. You know, a couple guys I know is gonna be hard taking down. 
like fighting Kamaru and Shimaev, those are hard fights for me because those guys are wrestler. It's gonna mm-hmm. be very hard for me to take these guys down. But whenever I fight a known wrestler, I'm looking more for a takedown, you know. So but I adjust, you know, they might fight one way, one boy the other way, Kamaru one way, Shimaev the other way, Majda one way, and uh but Lam Muhammad is very smart too. He does the same thing, you know. Each fight, he takes a different approach, you know. So, but I'm thinking he's gonna take kind of the same way he approached Sean Brady's fight. A little bit more striking, try to put more pressure. Eventually, maybe try to take me down. But I think he gonna he gonna try to march forward and put a lot of volume like he did with Sean Brady. And so this is what he he said about you. He said that. You're fighting the same every fight, and like he knows you, he doesn't expect that uh, you're going to change anything to his fight because it's like a short notice fight. You have some surprises maybe. for him. Maybe I got yeah, I got a lot of surprises for my opponents. You know, I think I think he's very tough. You know, I think he's very good. I do believe Bilal Mohammed is is a top five in the UFC. People kind of hate on little, on hate a little bit, but I think he's very good. He has good game plays, high IQ as a fighter. But I believe I'm a better fighter, you know. And I'm, I'm super happy that I'm going to be able to prove that May 6. I do believe that I can finish. It's going to be hard to finish him. I'm not saying that it's going to be easy, I do, but I do believe I can't finish or I can dominate Bilal Muhammad, you know. I think, Luke, he was, he rocked uh, Bilal a couple of times, right? But Bill then took him down, but he won't be able to take you down, probably, right? He can try, you know. He's more than welcome to try and grapple a little bit, but he's more than welcome to try to take me down. I don't mind. I like him when they try to take me down. You welcome him. You want him to try to take you down. I want, I want, like, I was welcome with Kamaru. Kamaru don't even try it. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Shimaev tried one time, he did it, but then he didn't want to stay there. So, Bilal yeah, for sure, he's more welcome to try to take it down. And I, and I noticed that whenever somebody tries to take you down or you're on the ground with someone, you don't just you don't just lay on the ground. You start you start punching. You start grounding the pound from the bottom. You never, yeah, you're that's very great. aggressive anywhere the fight goes. You know, on bottom, on top, on on the feet. I do believe I have all the tools to, to become a champion. And then beating Bilal Muhammad will solidify that. So I'm looking forward so much for this fight. And so you, you're taking out every possible contender, everyone who can have a title shot. So there is another fighter in the in the rankings, uh, new fighter, fresh fighter, Shafkat Rahmanov. What do you think about him? I think he's a great fighter. You know, we trained a couple of times here. Uh, he did, I think, his last three camps right here. He did the camp for Jeff New here. Mm. He did the camp for Alex Oliveira, I think he did here. And uh, two all the time, he's he's a very tough guy. I think he's he's he's, he's probably the next contender pretty soon, you know. So, uh, yeah, he's very, very tough. I think he's a, he has a bright future. Did you spar him or work with him? I spar with him. I work with him. We grapple. We wrestle. We we spar. He's a great guy. You know, he's a, he's a technically strong, young. I think he he has all the tools to become a champion. He's he's a tough dude. You you don't think that you will ever like have to fight him because like you and him are close in the rankings. No, we're probably fighting, yeah, for for number one contender for or especially for a belt for sure we're fighting. And, we and talk you still, about it already, you know. And you still we can talk about spar him. For sure, we're still training, you know. We're yeah. still getting getting making each other better. You no, know? whenever we get in the situation to become a champion, then we fight, but we're not fighting before that. But yeah, I think he's very, very tough. So uh, like everybody is talking about your Afro haircut and uh like everyone likes it. Like I, I heard that your mother, she's an African, and that that's what I meant by origin, right? Like you're half, half yeah, African. My, yeah, my the the part of my mom is from Africa. My my mother, my my grandmother from my mom. Yeah, my mom, mom, my mom has a hair like that. You, it's nice. Yeah, that's that's why you can do it. And and your father, he's from Scotland, right? 
Yes, you're right. You know, you're very good. My dad's from my my grand grandfather is from Scotland. That's amazing. So uh, your father, he was the one who brought you to BJJ, right? There's an interesting story, man. You yes. guys didn't have money to pay for the classes, and am I telling it right? And yes, you tell it right. You know, we we yeah. had a body shop at home. My daddy used to work there, like fixing the car, the inside of the car. And uh, we were very poor back then. Mm -hmm. And one of the clients was a, a jiu-jitsu coach. And then we saw a gi, we saw playing with the gi. And at the end of the service, my, my dad asked that client if, uh, if uh, you know, if we could start training. He said, how much? And we didn't have money. They exchanged the service that my dad did on his car for us to start training. We could train for three months for that same price. And then we started and we never stopped, you know, and then we like it and the coach kind of like us. We start training super hard. And, uh, yeah, we never stopped since then. Yeah, that was your destiny. Yes, I agree. So uh, what about your kids? Are you going to teach them? Are you teaching them, actually? They did jiu-jitsu for a while. They did jiu-jitsu, wrestling. Uh, they did kickboxing, a little bit of MMA. But now they fell in love with football. They're doing uh, American football, flag football, and they love it so much, and they, they, they're they very good at it that I'm, like, pushing a little bit more for football right now. But they can fight. They already know how to, to protect themselves. They they grapple a couple of times. They wrestle a couple of times. Yeah, they, they, they can't. The only thing that they they, they they have to know how to defend themselves, and they know already. They're really interested in MMA, like they're following. Because I saw like uh, a video of them answering the quiz questions and they have like a better MMA knowledge than, than half of the fans. They know everything. They know yeah. all the fighters. We we collect the, the, the cards. We have every single every single fighter card and uh, and they watch the whole fight. They know everybody. They love Max Holloway. They love Adesanya, Pereira, Charles Oliveira. Uh, they know all the fighters, and every time that, especially now when the, the school are done in May, any event that I go, they come with me. They 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 have pictures. They have pictures of Bilal Muhammad with with all the fighters, even the fighters that I might fight. They have pictures with Kamaru. They have pictures with everybody: Max Holloway, Adesanya, Pereira, uh, Rob Font, uh, Kevin Holland. They, they know everybody. They have pictures with everybody. Well, I'm going to ask the last question from me and then we'll just move to fun questions. So my last question is, uh, have you ever thought about retirement? Like, do, do you have any plans for your career for the next few years, maybe? Uh, I go one step at a time. You know, I want to become a champion. I'm going to do everything in my power to, to become a champion. Uh, I'm saving a lot of money. I'm doing a lot of investments, thinking about retirement. But I still Good love plus. to train. I still love to train and fight, you know. So I'm still gonna do that for a while. Whenever I don't have the will more to compete, to train, to fight, then I'm done. I don't. I don't know when I'm gonna be done. But whenever I don't have the fire more to train and to fight, I think I'll be done, you know. But I still think I have a couple more fights on me, a lot of more fights on me. Still want to be a champion. Yeah. And whenever I retire, we'll see. But I'm I'm doing a lot of investments already to make sure whenever I'm done, I'm good. I don't need to take a fight just to get a paycheck. And I have a lot of other plans too with the with the clinics, with the podcast, with the jiu-jitsu academies. I have a bunch of different plans that it's kind of waiting for me. When I'm done, I'm going to touch those plans and then make it work. Oh, like your investments is like uh, these jiu-jitsu classes that you're talking about? Yeah, I have a different investment, sure. I I do a little bit of real estate stock. I have different mentors with uh to help me with the money. You know, I think that that's the whole thing. We need we need mentors that know fighting to give you advice about fighting. We have mentor. We need to have mentors like on life to give you. Like advice on life, on relationship, on 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 financial side, you know, we got mentors in that and I have good mentors on my financial side, so make sure I'm not I'm not broke in a couple more years, <laughs> you know. So make sure 
I'm wealthy and relaxed, and and I can make the right decisions. Yeah, yeah. So uh, me and my friend we we going crazy on crypto lately. You know, we just we only invest in crypto. What crypto do you buy? Crypto is hard. I have a couple of cryptos. I have Ethereum. I have money on Ethereum. I have uh, Bitcoin. I have uh, so Solana. Mm -hmm. I think I have one or two more. So you get money in crypto, but I have more money on real estate, and I have money on stock. Your wife helps you a lot with everything, right? A lot. Uh, my wife helps me on everything. He's, he's not a mentor that I have. She knows exactly what I'm thinking. Sometimes I don't say nothing. And she, why are you you thinking about that? And then I say, how do you know? She, she knows everything. You know, she's number one support. She, she helps with everything. She reads the Bible every morning for you, right? Every day we did it today. We really Matthew and great, great learning. Every day she, she, we, we don't just read, you know, we read, we talk about it a little bit. Uh, yeah, every day she, we kind of getting better on the word and, and making each other better too, you know, make a relationship better. Mm -hmm. This is your kids' Bible or you just will let them themselves decide what religion they want no, to take? No, we, we, they, 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 they gonna be able to, to, to make a decision later but right now we're reading every night for the kids we have a, a kids bible that we follow and uh, every every night we read a little bit and, and, and teaching a lesson and, and talking have a good conversation about god you know showing them that we have a way we have we believe in jesus uh, we believe in god and then we show him the way and uh and better than just show and and read and say it, they they gotta see me and my wife doing it, you know, and they see we following, we we kind of preaching, and we're doing it, you know. They see by example, not just us talking and teaching. Yeah. So uh, the fun questions. These are just you can you can answer them short. You can answer them long. So uh, the first fun question is, uh, what's Bilal's biggest weakness and his biggest strength? I think it's the volume. You know, I think if I if I let him get the distances. Yeah, I think he's gonna give me a little trouble because he he don't stop throwing a lot of punches and then he doesn't disengage. He stay on the rhythm. I think his high volume and movement is his biggest strength. And for sure, guy, he's not a quitter. Guy has a big heart. He's hungry. I'm taking all that in consideration. You know, he's 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 coming to a war. What about his weakness? Biggest weakness? Weakness, I think, you'll be. On the floor, you know, if I'll be able to take him down, that's not going to be easy to take him down. He has very good takedown defense. But if I'll be able to take him down and I get on top of him, yeah, I think that's going to be a big weakness for him. When I get on top of him, it's going to be a big trouble. But like I said, that's not going to be easy. You know, he's he, he's, he, he can wrestle, you know. What's your prediction on Leon against Colby? It's a very close fight, but I think I think Kobe wins. You know, I think he's gonna get hurt a lot, but I do believe Kobe can get away. Yeah, that's different from from what I think. I think like Leon, he looks like extremely elite fighter. If if Camaro couldn't beat him, what Kobe can do different uh, than Camaro? Kobe, yeah. I I believe Kobe, he has a lot of more volume, you know, a lot of more throwing, a lot of more punches. Southpaw is very different from Kamara, you know, he's going to go forward. Kamara was getting a little bit more comfortable with the striking. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Kobe's going to do that. I think Kobe's going to throw a lot of, a lot, everything, a lot of more pressure. He's going to, and he's just going to keep wrestling and wrestling and wrestling and wrestling. He might not be able to take Leon down the first, maybe in the second round, but eventually he will, you know, and then I think he's going to, he's just going to outwork Leon. Like I said, I think he's going to get her first round. He's going to get her second round, but eventually third round and fourth round and fifth round, I, I think uh, Kobe will be able to take him down and dominate him. Yeah, I'm asking because like your last few predictions, they were spot on your like analysis. Let's see. Let's see. I got to I gotta study them more and watch. I don't have time, you know. I was watching a lot of Masvidal and I'm watching a lot of Bilal. 
whenever I had a time, I'm gonna I'm gonna study both guys and, and do a, a good breakdown. But as of right now, I think Kobe Kobe can get a win. Yeah, and so, uh, what's your toughest fight in MMA overall? Uh, toughest fight on MMA as of right now is Shimaev, but I think I think Bilal is gonna be harder. I think Shimaev as of right now. But I think Bilal is going to be a war. A war. Yeah, because I think it's going to be five rounds. I don't think he's going to quit. I think I'll be able to get a finish, but maybe in the later round, you know, fourth, fifth round, I just think he's going to be a dog and it's going to be a crazy fight. Yeah, like I saw the odds, like you're a pretty big favorite and the fans, they like kind of... Uh right off Bilal and they like confident that you're going to win but you don't underestimate Bilal not at all I think he's hungry I think Bilal Mohammed is super super hungry right now mm -hmm. I think with the hungriest guy under the division taking fights against anyone at any time and uh, yeah I do believe it's going to be a war I don't think it's going to be easy uh, I kind of know a little bit what he brings to the table but He's still going to be there, mentally there, in my zone, 100% there to to take care of Pilau. But I know he's a very tough, like, very, very tough opponent. I think he's going to be a way harder fight than, than my fight with Masvidal and my fight with a, with a new Megan. He's, he's a real deal. He's going to be a very tough fight. Uh, so what's uh, the one thing that you love the most about being a fighter? And what's the one that you hate the most about being a fighter? But don't say wait that. Uh, no, it's not a weight cut. No, uh, what I like the most, I like that I learned so much about myself. And in, in, like each and every fight, you know, I'm learning more and more about me. You know, I'm becoming a better fighter. I understanding my fears, understanding a lot of things. So that's my favorite thing. Going to a competition, I learned so much about me. And the thing that I doesn't like so much. Mm -hmm. I just don't like to lose, you know. I hate to lose, and I understand that that's part of the journey, you know, to get better. It's part of life, you know. We're not gonna win every time, but I hate to lose. I don't like to lose. Like, not a short loser. I, 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 I just hate to lose. You know, I'm gonna do everything on my part to not to lose. For sure, I want to win. That that's number one for me. But lose. I hate to lose. You learned all your lessons already, right? Yes, I've been learning a lot. We keep learning. Every day is a lesson, you know. I just hope every single time that I'm learning so much on a way that I don't have to lose to learn, you know. Yeah. I want to I want to win and learn. I don't want to lose to learn. But you know, I'm just so glad that like the Hamzat fight happened and maybe even the way it ended, like you changed. You started the YouTube channel after that, right? Yeah, started. I I started I started a YouTube channel a long time ago, but I had two breaks. You know, I did 2015, 16. I started, and then I give a little break. I started again before the the Danny Maya fight, and then after the Kamaro fight, I stopped it, and then we just start back again. You know, after the new Magni fight, we just restarted, and then. We have good numbers, you know, we're doing a good job and we're going to keep going with the YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I see. I really cool channel. I really like it. Thank you. Okay, Gilbert. Thank you so much for chatting. Um, really got, uh, I'm, I'm impressed with the way like you analyze Bilal Muhammad. I'm even more excited for the fight. Uh, I'm excited for the Leon and Colby, the way you analyzed it. And I want to see both of those sides. I will. I gotta make a, a a YouTube video. So after the fight, I'm gonna after the fight, I'm gonna take a little time off, and then mm -hmm. ever the fight is all done, deal, I'm gonna make a, a breakdown video. I'm gonna analyze everything, give a lot of points, and uh, yeah. But I do as of right now, I think Kobe wins. He might change, but I do think Kobe as of right now, uh, I think he's gonna win. And, Everybody watching, hope you guys like the, the everything that I'm posting. Make sure you guys follow me, subscribe to my YouTube channel.
follow on Instagram. We're almost break to a million, almost there. To mm -hmm. hear everything, please subscribe. Yeah, I'll share the link in the description so everybody can check out. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Gilbert. I won't take any more of your time. Have a nice day. Thank you, brother. Have a good one. Bye.